Well, hey, everybody, if you're a fan of the profiling evil rabbit hole, you're going to love digging a little deeper into this case, especially after you listen to the testimony of a woman who said she had nothing to do with her husband's murder. That's right, Beverly McCollum tried to convince a jury today that she had nothing to do with the murder of her husband, Robert Caraballo. She's been using her wheelchair during the trial and she made her way to the witness stand, leaning on and using the aid of a walker. My question is, was she trying to get some sympathy from the jury, a group of people that could send her away to prison for the rest of her life? Hey, hey thanks for dialing into Profiling Evil. You know, we've been talking all week long about the Beverly McCollum murder case. She's charged with the murder of her husband, assisted by her daughter, who's already been convicted and sent to prison, and well, a guy I guess you'd call a family friend. Well, there were no friends in this courtroom today, as everybody this week has been pointing the fingers at McCollum for orchestrating the murder. Take a minute, hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell so that you're getting all of our videos when we release them. And make sure you're uh, signing up for our podcast as well. Well, in my last appearance on Court TV, the question on everybody's mind was whether McCollum would take the stand in her own defense. Frankly, it just didn't seem like she had a choice because everything that's coming out in court points to her position as the one who orchestrated this murder and made sure that it happened. Let's watch that exchange. Yeah, my king, I would have to agree with that quickly. Um, I think she has no other choice. You've got the testimony of, of Chris McMillan, who basically laid it out for the prosecution. The only way to get away with this is to, to explain that it was really him who did it, and I was just going on to protect my children. I think that's the only story she can tell. Yeah, I agree. And and when you start looking at this thing in totality and him saying, uh, because what does he have to, to gain that, hey, they told me about this days earlier, that this is exactly how this thing's going to unfold. And then it happens and it happens in the same format that was laid out. You, you have this feeling that this thing was fantasized about, planned out. And when it was executed, of course, everything goes uh, out the window and it becomes very disorganized. But then, why on earth did you all of a sudden need to cover up with cement an area that you'd gotten along with a whole long time beforehand? Yeah, he's always been suspect to me, though. You know, he just hears about this murder plot and he goes along with it. What's his motive here? What's going on with him? He's always bothered me. But anyway, I don't know. Well, McCullum took the stand and she testified in what many people have indicated was kind of a soft and resigned voice. I don't know. I think it was a lot of theatrics. She gave an entirely different story as to what happened on May 7th, 2002, and she denied having anything to do with the murder. Now, you got to keep in mind, she happened to ride in the van with a body of her husband and didn't say anything. Now, perhaps there was no way around it, but she rode in the same van after they stuffed her husband's body in a trunk and drove him up to Ottawa County where he was dumped in a blueberry patch and then his body was covered with gasoline and set on fire. His unidentified remains became known as the jack-in-the-box murder victim. And I thought you'd be interested in her testimony, so I'm going to add it to this video. And if you've already seen it, then just skip to the end. But I think you'll, you'll get something out of listening to her testimony. So let's watch that. Where, when did you and Robert meet each other? Uh, in 1988 in Houston, Texas. And where were you living at that time? In Houston. And did you always stay in Houston? No. Or uh, did you move after Houston? From, uh, I always kept a home in Houston, yes, but uh, I moved to Louisiana to be close to Robert, and he was there for a few years. Okay, you're beginning to drive He was down. there for a few years. Then he was transferred to Beaumont, Texas, and uh, we moved there to be close to him there. And uh, after that, uh, he went to Connecticut. He wanted to go to Connecticut for, for 
parole release because of the conditions were different there. Okay. Either Connecticut or New York. I didn't want to bring the children back uh, into New York City. I came from this area before growing up, so I told them uh, it's better to go to Connecticut. I have a sister there. So I bought a home there. And uh, we stayed there. So you know, I'm going to object to this point. It's just an error. We stayed there uh, from. When an objection was made. You do need to stop talking until so, okay. the court rules. And I'm going to allow some latitude for some foundation, but we do need to get to where yes, we. Yes, Your Honor. I, I think we're almost there. Okay. At what point in time did you and Robert move to Charlotte? Uh, after Connecticut. Okay. And what year was that? Um, 2000. Okay. And you eventually wound up living at the ratio address? Yes. Now, obviously, you've been present for the testimony that we heard today, or we've heard throughout this week. Um, yes. Did you and Robert ever argue with each other? Of course. Uh, was it ever a violent argument? No. Was it loud? It could have been. Okay. Yes. Do you know an individual by the name of Chris McMillan? Yes. How do you know Chris McMillan? Uh, Chris came in with uh, Deneen. Uh, Sometime after January, I'm not sure, maybe late January, early February. January of what year? I, I think what year that ended, what year did? Your drifting. What year, the year that this took place, I think was in 2002? 2002, okay. Yes, right, uh, you know, right after the new year. Okay, um, how often would Chris be at the house? Um, he had some issues at his brother's home, and uh, Deneen uh, wanted him to stay with her because that was her boyfriend. I, I actually, De you're going to get... <coughs> I'm Sorry, um, excuse me. Deneen brought him to the home, my daughter. She wanted him to stay there with her in her room because he had nowhere to go, and they were a boyfriend and girlfriend. Okay. Now, there's been testimony given that um, Robert didn't like Chris. No, he didn't like Chris. Okay. Um, did Chris contribute to the household? No, not at all. Was he working during that period of time? No, not at all. Did he pay for food? No, not at all. From the time he moved in in January that you spoke of, how many days was he there up until May of that year? Um, I think I actually did a little calculation and I think of around 100 or 120 or 130 days. I would say he was there more than 100. Okay. Was Robert working during that period of time? Yes. What was Robert doing? Uh, his only uh, employment was the uh, Charlotte Newspaper Company, and he threw the newspapers all night, all night, in that the was, night. That would be what we would call a paper route? Yes, okay. he had several of them. All right. And were you working during that period of time? Uh, no, I was on workman's compensation. Okay. Now, you heard testimony from Mr. McMillan uh, that uh, he's alleging that you smoke marijuana with him. No. Okay. He also alleges that you did cocaine with him. No. No. In the Horatio Street address, was there a basement to that house? Yes. Okay. Did you ever go down in that basement? Uh, no. During the entire time you lived there, you never went in the basement? No. I didn't like this basement. Okay. Uh, who did go to the basement? Uh, Robert initially uh, wanted to go down there just so he would have some space away from the children, and he liked Beverly, to... Beverly, you're going to need to give your voice I'm sorry. Um, Robert initially wanted this space for himself. So he cleaned, it was very uh, dirty and, and uh, 
buggy and stuff. So he decided he wanted to clean it and make it an area for him to get away from the children and just have his space. And he, he did like to smoke weed, and he didn't want to smoke around the children. Okay. Did he have a rule about smoking marijuana in the house? Absolutely. What was that rule? Uh, no one can smoke in the house. No one can smoke in the house. Uh, and distinguished, I mean, was smoking in the basement okay? Yes. But in the rest of the house it was not? No. Okay. In all fairness, Beverly, uh, did you have a drinking problem during that period of time? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you drink uh, something called Wild Iris Rose? Mm -hmm. No. Would you consider yourself to have been an alcoholic during that period of time? Yes, I was an alcoholic. I was an active alcoholic. We've heard that you used to cry a lot. Was that true? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. No. Did you? Were there ever times when your mascara would run because of arguments you'd get into? Well, I'm not to my knowledge. I don't. I don't think so. Was uh, give us an idea who all was living in the house around May of two thousand and two? Uh, Denine, Christopher, my youngest daughter Cicely, Natasha, myself, and Robert. Okay, and. Cicely is the daughter of you and Robert? Yes, she is our daughter. Okay. Was Denine working there in that period of time? Uh, she was working for Candy, Candy Ford, and uh, she was terminated from uh, Candy Ford after, uh, obviously, she had two DWIs. Okay. So I'm she got sorry, Your Honor, I, I didn't understand any of the last things she said. Could you repeat your answer, please? Uh, I asked you where Deneen was working. Deneen was working at Candy Ford, and uh, she was terminated from Candy Ford. Okay, so she lost her, her job? Yes. Did she have any other job prospects? To my knowledge, no. Uh, was there any type of a daily schedule around the house? Absolutely. For instance, uh, who did all the cooking around the house? Me. Okay. What type of foods would you cook? Uh, I'm multi-cultured food, so I cook many different kinds of food. Uh, Robert, Robert, Robert likes rice and gondolis. Obviously, he's from DR, and rice and gondolis is their one of their national dishes. So I cook rice and gondolis well for him with chicken, um, and mostly a lot of Italian food. Uh, some curry foods, different foods. Okay. Did everyone eat the, cook, the, the food you cooked? Yes, cook? obviously. Okay. Um, now, how old were Cicely and Tasha during that period of time? Cicely um, was nine and Tasha was 11. Were they both in school? Yes. What type of a daily routine did the children have? Um, the routine was very different than what they were used to uh, compared to most of their lives um, because it was the first time that Robert uh, planned to schedule with them. So uh, coming from prison, I, which I understood perfectly, he was used to doing things uh, at a certain time. So every day, it was the same thing. Okay, so for example, uh, the morning would start at 6 a.m. and the girls would have to take their shower at 6 a.m. Uh, that was something they weren't used to because they would take their night bath normally. Uh, so they didn't like that, but I mean, uh, we tried to work things out as a family. And the same thing would go at 6 p.m. at night. So at 6 p.m., dinner, everything was finished. The girls took their bath or their shower, and they go to their bed and try to wind down for the evening. Okay. 
Did they eat dinner before they took their uh, evening shower? Yes. Okay. And they did their homework as well. Okay. Uh, did Robert work during the day? No, okay. never. How did the children go to school? How did they, excuse me, how did they get to school each day? Uh, <clears throat> Robert didn't like them to take the bus. So most of the time he, they were given a ride either by me and Robert, which most of the time it was Robert. Uh, and occasionally it was my niece, Shauna. Okay. Now, I want to take you specifically to the May the 7th, 2002 date. Do you recall that date? Yes, I do. Um, in the morning of May the 7th, 2002, did you happen to see Robert? Yes, I did see Robert. Um, was this before he took the kids to school? Yes, I seen him uh, when the kids were going to school. Beverly, again. Yes, I, I did see him before he brought the children to school. Okay. Yes, I did. Do you recall uh, approximately what time that was? Um, well, they have to be at school, I think, uh, before 8.05. So they probably leave the house every day around 20 minutes to 8. Okay. Uh, and did, after Robert dropped the children off that day, did he come back to the house? Uh, what he would normally do is drop them off, fill up with gas at the gas station, come home, we would drink coffee, and then we would go to bed together. Okay. And is that what happened that morning? Yes, that okay. is what happened that morning. Was that day different in any other way by, in terms of any information you learned that day? It was very different. Uh, Robert came home very disturbed. While he was getting gas, he was approached by someone. And it was my knowledge that whoever approached him, who I don't know who it was, he never uh, did say the person's name, and that uh, Robert was uh, informed that- Judge, was, Your Honor, this is gonna be hearsay. Okay. Let me rephrase the question. When Robert came back home, he informed you of some information that he got. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you what the information was. Okay. But you he had a conversation. Yes. Okay. And now, did Robert want some new rules to happen at the house? Yes. What were those new rules supposed to be? Um, we discussed that he wanted me to uh, tell my daughter, Denine, that um, because of her uh, sexual preference that he didn't want her there at the house anymore. Okay. And that Chris was a bum and he needed to go as well. Okay. Uh, Did you confront Deneen about that information? I remember, uh, I, I didn't, uh, know quite what to do with that because I, I didn't know uh, anything other than Deneen was uh, involved with Christopher. Okay, so uh, at that let me, point... Let me stop right there. So this information is news to you? Yes. Okay. Uh, and again, my question was, did you, did you confront Deneen or did you have a conversation with Deneen about that? Uh, yeah, after I went to sleep with Robert, and we uh, obviously were uh, affectionate with each other every morning, and um, I normally wake up, uh, I don't need much sleep, so. Beverly again. I don't need much sleep. So I usually get up after maybe two or three hours. So I would say I got up around 11 o'clock. I made uh, coffee, I sat down, I called Deneen to come to talk to me. Okay, let me stop you there. So you got up at 11 o'clock in the morning, made coffee, and then you talked to Deneen about what you had learned? Yes. Okay. Um, did you make any suggestions for Deneen on what the next step should be yes. for her to take? Yes, I told her that I wasn't going to argue with Robert and that if she wanted to stay there, she would have to talk to Robert today to come up with something. Okay, so your mindset was that the knee was gonna be having to move out that day? Yeah, yeah, okay. and Chris. 
Okay. Where was Robert, uh, if you recall, during this period of time? He was still sleeping. Okay. Do you recall what time that Robert might have got, woke up that day? Robert wakes up around the same time every day, around between 1 and 2 p.m. Okay. Now, you say that Robert also picked the kids up every day, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, they, with the exception, they were Awanas. And there again, Shauna would pick them up, I think it was on Wednesdays. So every other time, Robert would pick them up, yes. Okay. In your response, it seems that there were some times that other children would be picked up and brought to your home? Yes, I have uh, lots of beautiful baby nieces and nephews there, inshallah. Okay. Uh, was that a regular thing, or was it just... Uh, it, it can be very random. Um, uh, for example, uh, uh, Shauna, she may have to take one child to the doctors and she can't, she can't get back to the school to pick up the other children. She would tell me, uh, Tia, can you pick up uh, Shante and Angelo? And then I would go pick him up. Uh, Anthony would say, like, I can't get Louie, can you pick up Louie? Or more frequently was uh, Kelly and Armando, that they would... Um, because of their schedules and their very heavy work. Jackson, Your Honor, this is becoming narrative. Okay, uh, sorry. Let me, let me just kind of back up a little bit. So I think you answered my question about off and on, other children would come. Yes. You know. Okay, very good. Um, so that day, did Robert actually go and pick the children up? Yes. What time did. was that? Uh, I would say that he goes the same time every day. That is about quarter to three, and he's back. 3.20, 3.25, something like that. Okay, what time did, so what time did he get back with the children that day? A little after 3. Okay. After the children came home that day, what were, what, what did the children do at that point? Uh, the children uh, always do the same thing. They get the books, they sit at the table, and they start to study whatever it is that they need to study. While I'm cooking. Okay. Was there a regular dinner time around that house? Yeah. What time was that? Between four four o'clock and four thirty. Okay. Every day. Every day. And was that the dinner time on that day? Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. So everyone would know food is served between four and four thirty. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, what did Robert do after he brought the kids home? Most always he would go straight downstairs. Was that something he did every day? Yes. And how long would he typically stay down in the basement? Till dinner time. Okay. And so this was a typical day on May yes. 7th of 2002? Yes. Okay. Did you happen to see Deneen and or Chris during that time frame? Yes, they, they were going, she told me she was going down to talk to Robert. Okay. So, Deneen went to the basement. Yes, what with Chris. Chris. Yes, yes. I'm sorry? Yes, the two of them went to the basement together. Okay, so Deneen and Chris went to the basement. Yes. Okay. Did there come a time when dinner was ready? Yes, dinner was ready is the normal time. Okay. Did you have to call anybody for dinner that day? Yeah, um, I actually went downstairs to the where I would normally go. Beverly, you're gonna speak up again. Okay, uh, when I would have to call for Robert, he didn't like he he didn't like uh, most people other than males to go down there, other than uh, my niece Gina and Denise. No other females went down there. I, I'm sorry. I, I no other females went down there down there to the stairs. I never went down those stairs. I only went down as far as the fourth, I believe the number four or fifth stairs. Okay. Um, 
So you never went down completely down in the basement. No. Did you say anything? Or yes. I don't know what you said, but did you communicate that dinner was ready? Yes, I asked them if they were coming up for dinner. Okay. Did they immediately come upstairs? No, Rabbit uh, said, no, we are talking. We'll be up soon. Go ahead and start eating. Okay. Um, what did you do then? I sat down with the girls and we ate. Okay. So you and the girls ate, and then what happened after that? Um, I remember uh, cleaning up and a little time passed, and I went to call him again. Okay, so you did a second dinner call. Yeah. Did that you go down the basement then? I went to the same stair that I always go. Okay. Uh, yes. And did they immediately come upstairs? No. Okay. They said they were talking. All right. Um, what did you do? About what time was this? I'd say it was about an hour after the first time, so close to 5.30. Okay. What did you do then? I remember <coughs> I went up and I tried to preserve their food on the table, uh, start getting the girls ready to take their, their baths and their shower. Um, uh, nothing than a normal clean up, uh, pick up, a thing. Okay, like so you cleaned up dinner. Yeah. Were they still in the basement? Yeah, they were still in the basement. Yes. What did you do after you cleaned up and they were still in the basement? And then uh, I remember the girls were done with their showers and they were going to Tasha's room to uh, watch a video. A v VHS in those days, VHS. Okay. Um, so what happened after that? After that I went to the stair to go to the stair again to tell them like, okay, we are done here, so uh, what do you want me to do with the food now? Do you want me to put it in the refrigerator? I'm going to go lay down, the girls are going to lay down, so. And, okay, and again, did you go down the basement the third time? Yes, or did you go the down the basement time. on that third trip? Yes, I did, th third trip. Okay, yes. so you went down the basement? Yes. What did you see in the basement? Uh, I didn't see anything, actually, um, because they're in back of me. I have to actually stop. They would have to come forward. But at this time, at this time, someone grabbed my ankle. Okay, let me stop you there. So you've seen some photos that have been uh, presented during the course of this trial. Yes, I have. Does that stairway look similar to what it looked like? Yes. Now? Okay. I'd like to be able to pull up, I believe it's People's Number 93, which is a sketch of the stairwell. Yes, this is perfect. Okay. Now, that's been admitted as evidence. Is that an accurate representation of that stairwell back in it, May the 7th, 2002? Okay. We're going to try to use a silence. Uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, can you, are you able to circle on the stylus where you? I don't know, how do I do it? This, this? We can use that. Touch one of the colors. Touch the color? Yeah. Okay. Now? And then circle an area where you, okay, you can so be a bigger circle than that. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four. I think around here is safe, saying that it, that is pretty accurate. That's as far as I would go. Okay. Um, and on those stairs. One, one second, there, okay. So you're saying this second dot you put up here, that's the stairs, that, that's as far as down in the basement as you got? Yes, that's as far as I would have gone. Okay. So you got there, and then what did you say happened? Then, at that point, someone grabbed my, my right ankle. Okay, do you know who that someone was? And not until I kind of lost my balance. I, in the motion, there was a, a strange uh, tool. About, I don't know, about maybe this high. For the record, um, I guess Ms. McCollum is showing a, 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 a 
a length of about 12 or 14 inches? Yes. Let me ask you this. Around this high. Okay. Um, let me ask you this. Do you know what a crowbar is? Yes, I do know what a crowbar is. Okay. That's what, what you use for the tire? I guess you could, but generally speaking, was that a crowbar? Maybe I don't know what a crowbar is. Okay. I, I don't think it was a crowbar. Where, uh, where was this, where was no, this item when you saw it? It was uh, sitting on this, one of this stair. Okay. So it was just laying on the stair treads. And it was a strange, I remember looking at it for a second, and I thought about it many times after that. And it is some kind of a strange uh, wood piece with something uh, tied to it. Okay, so you picked that up and what did you do with it? I, when I lost my balance, when, you, when I lost my balance, I remember I, leaned, I was leaning forward, I grabbed this, there's no handle there, there's no handle on the stairs, this is all open. The piece of wood that they showed before was not there. It's clear, okay? So it's just the step clear. I reached down uh, and I swung back and... Okay, let me stop you there. So you swung back behind you? Yes. Why did you do that? I mean, it was a, it was like a, a reflex. Uh, it wasn't you intentional. You need to speak up, ma'am. It was like a reflex. It was not intentional. It wasn't something I thought about. Okay. I don't um, know why did, I did Did it. you make contact with anybody? Uh, obviously, I obviously I hit Robert in the face. Where about in the face did you hit Robert? Somewhere around the cheek area. Okay. Somewhere around what, the cheek. What area. did you do after that happened? Uh, I I mean I was looking and he had come like uh, on this. Uh, I was looking here. He was he was standing here, and his face was here. He was leaning. So, are you suggesting his face was leaning into the stairwell of the staircase? I mean, I don't know how to explain this. Well, let me ask you this: You said that that what that rail. Or that there was nothing there along that right side? No, there was, it was nothing Was there. it wide open? Yeah. Oh, okay, so there was, you're saying there's nothing there to obstruct your... No, there was uh, nothing there at all. Okay, all right. And you hit Robert. What did he do? Um, I mean, he started yelling at me, and he was talking, uh, obviously, another language. And he told me, like, just go upstairs. But his face was bleeding. Uh, the side of his face. Okay, so he was angry because you hit him. Yeah. He told me just. He, well, he, 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 I mean, I don't want to cuss, but he cussed that's me. That's okay, out. but adult, we're not going to do that. Okay. No. So <laughs> did did did, did you hitting Robert with that instrument? Did that cause him to collapse on the floor or anything? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, what did you after Robert? indicated he wanted you to go upstairs, so what did you do then? Um, I went upstairs, I remember I put the, the food in the refrigerator, and I went to lay down in the bed. The girl, I checked on the girls. The girls were nearly asleep. They were really ended down, going down. So. Okay, let me stop you there. This has been something you talked about a little bit during this trial, but are you naturally left or right-handed? I'm left-handed only. Okay. So when you swung that instrument, with what hand did you swing it? My right hand. Okay. And he was... Well, ma'am, let me, let me ask the questions. Okay. We're just going to volunteer things, okay? Okay, sorry. All right. Um, and you went upstairs after that? Yes, I went upstairs. Um, how long were you up there? Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe an hour, hour, a little over an hour. 
Okay, can right. you? I'm maybe, a for time, maybe, by the way, uh, so if you can give me an idea about what time it might have been. Around a little after seven. Uh, okay. All right. Um, before going on, I want to ask you some, some, some questions. Um, there was testimony earlier in this, in this trial about um, Robert molesting either of the uh, two children. No. Okay. That is um, not true. Okay. Was there ever a time when you developed a plan to kill Robert? No, absolutely not. Did you ever speak with Chris McMillan about Robert molesting the children? Never. Absolutely not. You, did you ever develop who was supposed to be where in the basement in order to effectuate this? No, I didn't have that. Was that something you shared with Denise? Never. Okay. Now, after you were upstairs at about 7 o'clock, where, where were you in the house? I was laying down in the bed in, in our bedroom. Okay. And what do you remember next? I remember Janine came out of the uh, Are you going to speak up? I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm going to speak up. Excuse me. Uh, I remember Deneen coming upstairs, and uh, she she said that she needed help, that something happened, and they, that, that she said that we them killed Robert. And okay. What time was this? Little left or something. Okay. Were you aware of anyone else in the house during that period of time? Tasha and Cicely. I'm sorry? Tasha and Cicely, my two daughters. Okay. Was there any description of how this happened? No. Was there any explanation of a circumstance? None. Okay. None whatsoever. No conversations about that. So the name your daughter expressed that to you in that way. Yes, she did. And she she asked me for something, but I don't understand what it, what she's looking for. How were you processing that information? At I that wasn't time? processing it, Tim. I was not processing it. What What did you do? I couldn't even breathe. I was uh, thinking this must be a bad dream, and that he's still alive. That, uh, okay. Did you even know where this happened? No, I didn't know. I, 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 did you ask Denise where he was? No, I didn't ask her anything. She looked like she was crazy, and uh, she wanted uh, something. Okay. Well, I, I don't know this. I did you? Did you make any attempts to check on him? To check on Robert? Yes. Chris was downstairs. I, I didn't go downstairs. No, I would not go downstairs. So the last time you saw Robert was down in the basement? The last time I seen Robert, he was alive. Okay. And you're assuming he was down in the basement? Yeah. Okay. Did you call the police? No, I didn't call the police. Did you call anyone? No, I didn't call anyone. Do you know why you would not have called the police? I mean, um, I didn't know what was going on. I'm trying to think how to respond. I mean, uh, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what happened. I don't know what could go wrong. I am concerned for Robert, Deneen, Cicely, Tasha, M million things uh, were going through my head. Uh, she was 
coming, like, give me something, help me, or, I don't know. Okay, and so what happened after that request that Deneen made to you? I asked her, what, what did she want? What do you want? And uh, she told me, just give me something, I need something, I'm like what? I don't know, like a bag. So I said, a bag, okay. I went in a couple of feet and uh, the trash bags were there, and these little white trash bags. And I handed it to her. When I handed it to her, she told me, uh, she cursed and she said, like, I don't need this. And she threw it at me. I remember okay. he hit it's me in my there, face. So there was that offer or that help that she asked for there. What do you recall Deneen doing then? She told me she needs something different than a bag. So I told her I don't know what she would need. I don't have anything. Okay. Let me stop you there. There's been testimony that there was some type of a, um, a trunk or a locker in your room. Do you recall that? That is the same uh, trunk that my mother gave me, that my mother gave me them pictures and there, and they still have pictures in them still, I'm pretty sure, today. Is that the same trunk that we're talking about in this case? This trunk? Yes. No. Prior to any photos or the testimony, had you ever seen this trunk before? No, no, I've never seen that trunk. Do you, do you know where the trunk came from? No, I don't know where it came from. It is, it's not the one that has my family's pictures and then my mother and my father's whole family pictures are in that same trunk that left Michigan, that went to Jamaica, and then went back to Texas. Okay. Um, and it still has the same stuff in it. To the best of your knowledge, what did, uh, what did Deneen do after that? She went to the pole barn. How do you know that? Uh, because I walked with her out there uh, and then I just told her like I I couldn't I couldn't even stand up anymore right now. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what happened. I don't know if it's real. Uh, okay. So I don't know if it's an accident. I don't know anything. Okay. So you've gone out to the pole barn. And from the pole barn, did you help no. get anything out of the pole barn? No. Okay. What did you do next? I went to the bedroom, and I remember I was uh, crying, I was praying, I was thinking, I was trying to breathe. Uh, what time was this, do you think? When I went back to the bedroom? Yes. Shortly after she came up the stairs, uh, 10, 12 minutes okay. later, 10, 12 minutes after she came and calling me, maybe, maybe 15. But as far as the exact time of day, you're not, was it, it was dark outside, obviously. It was no, it wasn't. I don't okay. think it was dark outside yet. No, no <coughs> it was not dark outside yet. All right. Um, when is the next time that you saw Deneen? Uh, she came back into the bedroom. She came back into the bedroom um, 30 minutes or so later, or 40 minutes later. Okay, and what did she do when she came back into the bedroom? She said, Mom, uh, get up, I need you to give us a ride, please give me a ride, please, we need a ride. I told her, like, just leave me alone. Okay, uh, so she asked you for a ride. Yes, she asked did me. You want, did you want to give her a ride? No. Okay. I didn't want I wanted Did she say where she wanted a ride to? No, okay. she didn't tell me anything. Was there a... Was there a time that you eventually did give her a ride? After she told me we were going back and forth a little bit, and uh, she told me, well, the girls are already in the car with Chris. And I said, wow, wow. Okay, let me stop you there. So she informed you that the, the, kid, the two girls 
are in the car. Is this a car or, or what? Type it's of a van. Okay, it was a van. van. We've heard testimony about there being a van. This is the van we're talking about. Yes, okay. it is the van. So your understanding was that Chris was in the van and the girls were in the van. Yes. Okay. Um, so did you get in the van? Yes, I got in the van. Where did you sit in the van? In the driver's seat. Okay. Who was sitting in the passenger seat? No one was sitting in the passenger seat. I think there's been some testimony about this is a multiple row seating van, is that correct? It's uh, <clears throat> two in the front, two behind them, and then the seat in the back. Okay. So who was sitting directly behind you? Tasha and Cicely. Okay. Tasha was, uh, I believe, exactly, Cicely was in back of me, and Tasha was diagonal. Okay. And who was sitting behind them? Uh, behind Tasha was Deneen. And behind Cicely was Chris. Okay. And once you started to drive the van, where were you going? I don't know. Okay. Was there ever a discussion before all this happened about you driving the van somewhere? No. Okay. I mean, other than I mean, other than her telling me she needed a ride. Okay. Um, uh, they needed a ride. You're still processing what happened. Why did you decide to get in the van and drive? Because my daughters were in there with Chris. Okay. So the girls were in the van? Yes. Were you fearful for them? Yes, of course I I mean... Why did you drive? I mean, uh, first of all, no one was allowed to drive our vehicles. And second, I have my license. Okay. So Chris didn't have a driver's license? I've never seen him drive, I don't know. All right. So where did you drive? I remember uh, right around the corner was our friend, uh, family friend, Lance Adams. And I said, uh, I want to stop to see if the girls can st stay with Lance. And I thought it would be a way to get, get the girls away from them. Okay, um, that didn't that didn't work out. No, okay. Lance, Lance, Lance said to me. Objection, Your Honor. It's going to be this. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I basically. Yeah, so basically, that what your goal was stopping there didn't work. Yeah, but the time. I, I just, okay. What time was it? Uh, I remember uh, there was an appointment between the father and the sons for, for a game at 8.30. So okay. it was a few minutes before 8.30. So this was a few minutes before 8.30? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, eventually, did you drive out of Charlotte? Yeah, eventually. Okay. After now, I'm not asking you to try to remember the route, but... Was it, at any point in time, were you on the highway? Yeah, I didn't even, uh, My last uh, try was to my niece and nephew, Sean and Mark's house. They weren't home. Okay, so you tried a second stop and no one was home. I tried three stops. Okay, no one was home? At the last two, no one was home. Okay, so after that, was there time that you got onto the highway? Yeah. Okay. And where were you driving? I don't know. Uh, at that point, Deneen was giving me directions from, I don't know if you know where Maple Street is in Charlotte. In Maple Street in Charlotte, uh, she was giving me directions to get to the highway, obviously. Okay. At that time, as you were getting ready to go on the highway, the individuals that you described and where they, was, where they were sitting, Yes, sir. Were those, the, were those the only individuals that you thought were present in the van? Yes. Did you know that, that Robert would, might have been in the van? No, not until Janine, uh, she said that. 
before mm -hmm. we were getting uh, f uh, from leaving Shauna's house. Okay. But she told me, like, uh, just stop the bull crap. I have the, the Roberts in the back, and okay. we can't stay in Charlotte. So start okay, so driving. Start driving. Okay. At some point in time, you wound up in Ottawa County. And where? You wound up in Ottawa County at some point in time. Yes. Were you aware of where you were when you got there? No, no. Did you know where you were driving to? Not at all. Who was giving you directions? Uh, from when we reached the trussel and went under some area that we went to the trussel. From when we reached the trussel and went under the trussel, Deneen had me go left, get on the highway, and then from that point, Chris gave all the directions. Okay. Was it Chris that directed you eventually to that what we've been calling the gate off of that, that uh, two-track road? He gave me the directions and told me where to stop, yes. Okay. Now, once you arrived at that location, what happened then? Uh, it was completely black. It was completely black. That street was, I don't know if it still is the same today, but it has no lights, and I remember I couldn't see anything. Okay. Um, you seem to indicate that around the time you left Charlotte, it was around 8.30. It was before 8.30. Okay. Do you recall by any chance how long you drove? It seemed like more than, more than an hour. Okay. All right. So you arrived at that location that's been talked about, the, the two-track road. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, what did you do then? Uh, two-track road. I didn't drive on a two-track road. I, I apologize. That was a confusing question for my part. I didn't mean that you drove on the two-track road, but when you pulled at what we've been calling the gate area? Yeah. Okay. I know you didn't pull on to the two-track no, road. No, I, I didn't see that area at all. I couldn't okay. see that area at all. I mean, where he told me to did pull. I pulled, he told me, pull over, I pulled over, and then they got out of the car. The, okay. the so at some, and point in time, at some point in time, Chris told you, stop? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What happened then? They both got out of the car. You say they both, who is that? Chris and Deneen. Chris and Deneen got out of the van. Yes. What did they do then? Uh, they went to the back and they opened the back back, the far back. The back of the van? Behind from where they were sitting. Okay. In the back of where they were sitting, there's a space there, Okay. a small space. Now, this van, does the back door of this van open up, or does it open side to side? Up. Okay, it opens up. Yes. All right. Did you at any point in time see what was in the back of the van? No. Did no, you I did get, not. Did you get out of the van? No, I did not. Okay. What did you observe Chris and Deneen do after they had opened up the back of the van? I couldn't, I couldn't really see them. I couldn't see them. Okay. I uh, remember I um, I tried to crane my neck as far as I could to the right, and I think Deneen had something light on, maybe a white scarf or a white uh, something white, maybe a hoodie or something. I don't know. And I seen it looked like they went very much to the right. They were moving towards the, the side. To the right. Okay. Um, so they had disappeared out of the site. Yeah. Why didn't you just drive off? I didn't even know where I was. <laughs> okay. But at that point in time, you and the girls were in the van by yourself. Yeah. And you were relatively safe. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I didn't think about that. Okay. Um, what do you recall happening after? that? Um, maybe some time passed. Okay, I don't know uh, how much time. You need to keep your voice up. Some time passed. I don't know how much time. Uh, mm. Okay. 
What were the girls doing all throughout this entire time? I thought they were sleeping, but I wasn't sure. Okay, you thought they were sleeping, but you weren't certain? No. Okay. Um, did there come a time when Chris and Denise came back to the van? Um, Chris came back to the van running and screaming, go, go, move, move, go. And I turned back to ask him, go where, where, where am I going to go? Where's, like, where's Deneen? And he jumped over uh, Sicily, uh, touched it to get to behind Sicily, and uh, I think um, he woke he woke them up, or one okay. of them up. I'm so he sure. jumps in the van, goes to the very back. Yeah. Do you ever see Deneen this evening? She comes running, and he's screaming, go, go, go. And uh, Deneen was uh, trying to, uh, but then I started to move the van a little bit, and Deneen was jumping into the van, and, and that is when uh, the whole earth shook. Okay, the whole what, earth what you shook. Mean by that? I mean, the whole earth shook. I mean, it was like a big explosion, huge, huge. Okay, what did you see? When I look back, I, all I can see is fire, big flames. Okay. Before that flame happened, and if I'm, asking, if I'm repeating myself, I apologize, but did you ever get out of the van? No, I never got did out of the van. Did you ever go to that location where they had been before they came back? No, no. You saw some photos earlier of what's the crime scene photos of that location. Yes, I've seen the photos. Did you ever go to that location no. that evening? No, I never went to that location. So after Chris <coughs> and Deneen got back into the van, Yes. what did you do then? Uh, they gave me directions to go back home. Okay. So they had to tell you how to get out of there? Yes. Okay. And uh, Chris gave the directions, not to okay. me. And were you, uh, what direction were you going? I mean, uh, what do you mean, what direction? North, south, east, west? No, I'm just, uh, I, I don't, I, Actually, did you like the way you came, I guess is the question. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, that, that whole uh, few hours was, uh, I don't know how, if anybody could ever imagine, but it's not, uh, it felt like, uh, it felt like I couldn't breathe. Okay. Before, um, before you drove off, did the girl stay asleep this entire time? No, when, uh, when, Excuse me, when that big boom, one of the girls said, Mommy, and I remember looking back, tell them to stay calm and go back to sleep and be okay. Okay. There's just been testimony about uh, Chris and Deneen removing their shoes. Do you remember hearing that? Yes, I remember hearing did that. Did you order them to remove their shoes? No, I did. No. Did you remove your shoes? No, absolutely not. <coughs> did they tell you what they had just done? I mean, uh, I told them, like, what have you done? While I was driving, I, I remember I was uh, scared. I was uh, worried. I was... Uh, <coughs> Shocked. <laughs> I have a lot of uh, feelings, and I said to them, like, oh, you are crazy. What are you doing? And uh, Chris said, uh, oh, I can't say that, can I? Yeah, but, <laughs> but basically, you were led to believe that they had set Robert's body on fire. Uh, I didn't see, I didn't see that, but well, let me ask you I this. could so say. You became aware at some point in time during the drive 
that they have destroyed this body, yes. Okay. Did you piece it together at some point in time? I felt that they did. Okay. I felt that okay. they did, yes. And you know, I asked him, what have they done? And he, he said, like, Objection. there's no... Said, we can't get into that. Okay. okay. So, um, when you started this drive from Charlotte, you were fearful of the girl's safety. Okay. Yeah, I was, yes, I was. At this point in time, were you still fearful of the girl's safety? Yes, I was. Were you fearful of your safety? Yes, I was. Not only were you still processing what you had heard earlier, but you're processing now what you experienced indirectly. Yes. Okay. And you drove back to Charlotte. Yes. And they were having to tell you how to drive back. Yes. Do you recall what time of the day or night that it was when you got back to Charlotte? It was. Uh, You're going to have to speak up. I'm sorry. It was definitely after midnight, one ish. Or I'm not sure. It was very late. It was very late. Okay. So when you arrived back in Charlotte, did you go to the Horatio Street address? Yes. And then what did you do? Uh, I remember uh, I tried to get the girls to come with I remember I tried to get the girls to come with me to the bedroom. And, uh, I'm sorry, who did you try to get to come to you in the bedroom? Tasha and Cicely. Okay. And uh, um, then I had them lay down in bed, and I told them just to get some rest and uh, have school in the morning. Okay, uh, so did they come to bed and lay down? Yes, they did. And did you stay in the bedroom as well? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, the following day would be May the 8th or that day that, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, it was a school day or not. Okay. So, morning time comes. Yeah. What happens then? Uh, I got them up and I asked them to get ready. Uh, I had, I remember I had, uh, I couldn't sleep, I obviously. Um, Keep your voice up. There. I couldn't sleep, I called my mother. And I called my sister, my big sister, Brenda, and my mom. Okay, so you called your mother? Yeah. And your sister? Yeah. What was the purpose of that one? I was frightened, and they were the only people that I know that I loved and trusted very much. Okay, so you spoke with both of them? Yes, I did. Okay. Now, following those phone calls, what decision did you come to as far as what you should do? Uh, I mean, uh, they both told me to... You can't repeat what they said, but okay. what decision did you come to? Uh, to get as far away from Danine as I could with the girls. Okay. Now, let me ask you, there's been some other testimony about a cleanup in the basement. Did you ever go down in that basement after you got back? No. Any time at all? No. Did you ever put a padlock on the basement floor? No. Okay. Now I want to take you back just briefly because we I kind of glossed over this, but I want to be exact because you heard testimony about what did actually happen in the basement. When did you ever go down into the basement when all three of them were down there the evening of the seventh? No. Did you ever witness anyone assaulting Robert down there? No, Robert isn't the kind of man you can assault. I okay. don't understand. Did you yourself ever assault Robert that no. evening no. intentionally? No. You indicated earlier that you hit him. Uh, yes, I swung this instrument or tool, whatever it was, and uh, I didn't. Uh, in, I didn't plan on picking it up, and I didn't. Uh, Try to hit anyone. Okay, but as far as what happened to Robert in that basement, you never witnessed that. No. Did you ever use the hammer to hit Robert with? 
No, I never Did you ever see who actually used the hammer? No. Did you ever try to suffocate Robert that evening? No. Did you ever put a rope around his neck? No. Did you ever sit on top of him as this was happening? Absolutely not, no. So the following day, did you ever confront Chris about what happened? No. Did you ever confront Deneen about what happened? No, I did not. Did you ever talk to them about this at all? Never. Not before. Were you still concerned? Were you, were you still concerned about your safety? Yes, I was. And the girls' safety. Yes, I was. They were not. Uh, no. Now there's okay. There's been testimony that at some point in time you went to Jamaica. Yes. I'm a little fuzzy on when all that happened. Okay. So uh, I mean, did you? How long did you stay at the Horatio Street address before you left Charlotte? For good. Well, uh, there was a, we were kind of leaving something out, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but uh, the... I'm sorry, Your Honor, I cannot hear yeah, you. Could you please... I'm sorry, I'm That's sorry, sorry Your Honor, I'm sorry. Speak up. Um, there was a gentleman that showed up at the house, Dennis Ferguson. Okay, there was a gentleman that showed up at the house. Mm -hmm. And was this a gentleman associated with anything? Jackson, Your Honor, this is not... The question that he asked, this has nothing to do with the question. Blanking out on what the appropriate action or how to say it. Um, non-responsive. Non -responsive. Um, well, he asked, what, when did she leave Charlotte for Jamaica? What happened? And she's explaining what happened after the uh, incident and before she left for Jamaica. So I'll allow it. Go ahead. Well, let me ask a clarifying question. Did this gentleman showing up at the house have anything to do with your departure from Charlotte? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Um, well, maybe I'm not going to be able to say it, I guess. Uh, he was a friend of Robert's. Okay, so was a, someone that Robert knew. <coughs> okay, okay, fair enough. Um, but at some point in time, you decided to leave Charlotte for good. Yes. Okay. And was it then that you decided to go to Jamaica? Yes. Okay. Did you go directly from Charlotte to Jamaica? Yes. Okay. Um, Nobody remembers that. I'm sorry? And nobody seems to remember that. Okay. Um, Now, during the, how, how, how many weeks was it before you left for Jamaica? <clears throat> six weeks? Six weeks? Okay. Six so you five. stayed at the ratio address for six weeks after that yeah. May 7th, May 8th day. Yeah, I was going to the doctors for my arm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, throughout all this time, did you ever consider letting the police know what happened? I did think about it. Okay. and uh, Did you actually do that? No, I did not. During this period of time, where were Chris and Deneen living? Uh, they never left me alone. They were there all the time. Okay. You say they never left you alone. No, they were there all the time. Or one or the other always with you? Or both, yes. Okay. <coughs> did, there, did you ever have the opportunity or think about the opportunity to tell Cicely what happened to her father? Um, I often tried to think of some kind of way uh, to tell Cicely. Keep your I voice up. I, I often, sorry again, I often thought of how I can tell Cicely this without hurting her okay. more. <coughs> All right. Um, were you concerned about what that knowledge of her half-sister's actions would have been? 
I mean, no, I wasn't concerned what her actions would have been other than I didn't want to. Cicely um, had uh, some emotional problems uh, as a teenager, a young teenager, okay. uh, where I had to get her therapy and different things. So yes, I, I'm concerned about Cicely's uh, mental health for sure, yes. Okay. Um. It would be fair to say when you did go to Jamaica, was there a point in time that Chris went with you to Jamaica? Yeah, Chris came with us at the same time. Okay, so when you left for Jamaica, Chris went there as well? Yes. How are you processing this information? Because this is an individual that you came to believe is some pretty horrible things. Yeah. yeah. Why would you let him be around? No, it wasn't. It wasn't like that. It was determined that he was going to go with me. So uh, I didn't want to make um, a big problem. I just said, "Okay." I mean, uh, I don't know what else to say other than. Uh, I wasn't doing any talking with Chris. Okay, but I'm, really, I, I'm not asking a question. Okay. Really. okay. Did uh, Deneen come with you to Jamaica? No. Okay. Um, how long did you spend in Jamaica? Several years. Okay. Did you ever come back to Charlotte for any reason? Yes. I had to, uh, my niece picked me up. I had to come back to see the doctor here in Charlotte. And so you come back for your for medical purposes? Yes. Okay. Did Chris stay with you the, the entire time you were down in Jamaica? No, Chris actually uh, got himself a girlfriend and was uh, moving around the island pretty much on his own. Okay. He stayed. Did, he stayed for one month. About okay. one month. Yeah, one month. Did Did Neen ever come down to visit you in Jamaica? Yeah, she, she did. did. Yeah. Mm. During this time, what was your relationship? Well, let me ask you this. Um, you eventually moved back to Texas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, my mother. Uh, she was. Uh, around in her 80s and she called for me to please come and take care with her. Okay. To please come and take care with her. So how old was your mother at that point in time? Um, Eighty... Eighty-four? Eighty-four, okay. Or Eighty-three. Was she living with you at any point in time? Yeah, my my mommy and me. Uh, my mommy, my mommy and me spent the next uh, near ten years, the rest of her life, together, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. I was blessed to have my mommy with me. Okay. And I'm led to believe that she passed away sometime in 2015. Yes, yeah, she passed away uh, April 20th, 2015. Did you ever have any further contact with Chris after Jamaica? No, never. Did you have contact with Denise? Yes, I did. How often did you have contact with Denise? Uh, when, when I was in Jamaica? Or well, I'll just say when you moved back to Texas. When I moved back to Texas, she lived uh, one mile f away from me all the time, and uh, she mm -hmm. would uh, try to participate in our every Sunday dinners and uh, with my mom, my sister, my children, and our friends every Sunday. Uh, she would come for holidays. Uh, she would stop by the shops, uh, head to uh, mattress companies. They were both in her name, so she would uh, check what's going on and uh, visit, have lunch with me. Okay, let me stop you there. So, did you ever talk to Deneen about what happened that Never. night? Never. 
Never. Why would you not have this conversation? Never. I. Uh, <laughs> it was something that uh, I didn't know uh, ever how to cope or deal with. It was something that until today is in my my thoughts. Okay, let me stop you there. Um, we heard testimony from Cicely a few days ago. Yes. You heard that? Yes, I did. Did there come a time when Cicely did reach out to you and with these questions? Yes, she did. And why after all this time did you decide? Well, because she asked me. She asked me. She had never asked you before? No, never. So when she was nine or ten? I just, uh, I remember... Uh, Let me stop. There's, there's question, there's, there's, there was some testimony about being told that Robert left the family and moved to Canada. Mm -hmm. Did you tell her that? <coughs> no, that is what Deneen told Dennis. I'm sorry? That is what Deneen told Dennis. Okay. Dennis, the, uh, the uh, Dominican uh, gentleman that came to our home. Okay. Looking for Robert. Okay. Uh, but at any rate, did you and, and Cicely have this conversation about Robert sometime in 2015? Yes. Okay. And we heard her testimony. Yes. Is that a fair and accurate uh, depiction of how that conversation went? I mean, uh, I know she was very emotional uh, that day. I was very emotional too. I mean, uh, she seemed to remember who was driving. She seemed to remember, no, I didn't know about the, the big explosion. Uh, she seemed to remember that I picked up the tool, but uh, she didn't have the description correct, but I mean, I understand. Well, in, in all fairness, it was just the first time outside of when this happened the next day, you made a couple phone calls to very close family members. When you spoke with uh, Your Honor, I'm gonna object at this point because, I, or maybe I'm just confused, because it seemed like she just gave, it's non-responsive again. My understanding was, what was you told? What did you tell her on that day? But she's she, talking about the conversation, I think. Is what I, she's, I asked if the, if the conversation is a fair depiction of what I heard. Well, she's saying she says, she says being Sicily. You know. uh, fair point. Uh, we need to figure out who she is. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, so, I, go ahead, Mr. Rick. I'm confused. confused. Okay, well, when we use words like she, we don't know what she you're referring to. So let's, let's use a given name. So Sicily. Yes, Cicely, my date. So Cicely, you're, you're, you were commenting that Cicely, I don't want to yes. testify for it, but you're commenting that what Cicely testified to. Yes. And what Cicely you talked about that day was a, an accurate conversation. Yes. Okay. Um, now, my question I was getting to was that you telling Cicely that day, was that the first time that you actually told another human being after it originally happened what happened? Yes. Okay. So that was the first time that Cicely's hearing that her half sister, Benin, yes. killed her father. Yes. And she wanted nothing more to do with it. Uh, she made it clear that okay. uh, she didn't want to be in Denise's company honest, anymore. Be here, say, at this point. Let me rephrase. Just saying. Okay. Um, without going into that detail of what Cicely may or may not have wanted or said. Yes. Um, did you and Cicely continue to have contact at all? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And um, yes. she would, extent, uh, let me ask the question then. Yeah. To the extent that would she ever come and visit you? She did weekends there at my house, and I watched her dog, maybe sat her dog, huh? on the weekends when she would go hang out with her friends in Houston, or if she had uh, reserves, uh, she had weekend reserves. Uh, or drill duty or whatever it was, she would stay and sleep at our home and stay okay. with me. All right. There came a time when you left Texas, is that right? Yes. And you moved overseas? Yes, I was already married. 
to my husband. You heard testimony that this, that the death of Robert, there was a video made of it and there was some type of a documentary. Did you ever stumble upon that information? No. Had you heard from anyone about anything that was going on no. here in, in, in Eaton County? No. So with the first time you heard about it was when you were overseas? Yeah. We've had testimony that Robert had spent some time in prison. Yes. Okay. Um, while he was in prison, did you ever think of leaving him? Uh, no. Okay. Um, and you moved with the kids. Yeah. Wherever Robert happened to be bought. Yeah, I tried to support him. I tried to uh, be there for him emotionally and physically and. Uh, tried to keep him connected with the children. Uh, Danine would come and visit with with uh, us. If she was there visiting us, she would go visit with Robert. So everybody had a relationship. Everybody had a relationship. I even brought his mother from uh, DR to spend one month with us to bring her to see her son and have a relationship with my daughter. Okay. Uh, what did you gain? by losing Robert. What did I gain? Yeah. I don't think I could gain anything by Sorry. losing Robert. I couldn't gain anything by losing Robert, no. Okay. Nothing to gain. I'm close to being done with my direct here. I do have a couple of questions. Time for purposes. Um, I'm very to be fair to the jury. Yes. Okay. Um, you have a bit of a past. Yes. Okay. You got in trouble while you're in Texas. Yes. You have been convicted of theft charges. Yes. And you and I spoke, and you understand that committing a theft crime tends to call into question your credibility and your truthfulness. Uh, I don't know why it would, but it's okay. Well, we did discuss that. Would it be fair yes. to say that you have had minor misdemeanor theft charges in Texas. Yes. And then you also had some more serious charges in Texas involving fraud or passing counterfeit. Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you recall the when those uh, occurred? Uh, early 90s. Oh, maybe 93 or 92 or something like that. If I told you 93, 94 with that? Yeah, okay. Yes. So this leaves one big question in my mind, especially to those of you who have spent the week going down the rabbit hole on this particular case. If you were sitting on the jury, how would you find Beverly McCullum? Would you find her guilty or would you think everybody else did it and was pointing the finger at her? Now remember, if in fact she did commit this murder, she got away with it for 20 years as she tried to hide out in Italy, but forensics caught up with her. And I'm going to be looking for your comments down below. So I hope as we close out that you'll look for Profiling Evil on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. And if you like audio podcasts, I hope you're checking out Profiling Evil podcasts on your favorite podcast platform. 
Hey, make sure that you're getting the BOLO. And the only way you can get our digital newsletter to the BOLO. So make sure you go over to profilingevil.com and that you sign up. Because the next issue, it's coming out next week. And you want to be on that list. The only way you're going to get it, folks, is by being on the list. And don't, and don't forget to hit the notifications on choir practice for Monday night. Hey, everybody. Look who I'm hanging out with. And uh, listen, I'm not attending choir practice, but I just wanted to tell you that you need to be watching Profiling Evil YouTube. Don't miss it. I'm telling you, there's something there for you every single time. I never miss. You shouldn't either. It's going to be an interesting one because we're going to bring in an L.A. Police Department chief and we're going to bring in a sergeant from New York City Police Department to talk about technology and law enforcement. But the, the thing that I'm really excited about is Mr. David Robinson, the father of Daniel Robinson, is going to join us with a special message and a special announcement. So make sure you're following choir practice. We'll have a great Easter season. And for those of you who celebrate this Christian holiday, enjoy the time away with family and friends. When you get back next week, we'll tackle some new cases. And I hope that you'll take time to check out our video from last night where we talked about the polygamous FLDS Infant Cemetery. I'm actually sharing a link down below so that you can explore the map that I've created. It's been a secret that's been hidden away for 75 years. And I think you'll find it interesting if you go and check it out. So thanks for your support of Profiling Evil, everyone. We'll see you soon at the next crime scene.